There is no single best power source in RVing. Every option has its pros and its cons. Fuel storage, weight, price, weather, noise, storage space, and ease of setup all play into what option you'd choose for any given situation. Hey there, and welcome to RV Gear and Far. I'm Joshua. While RVing, we currently carry three power generation sources in addition to plugging into shore power. We have two small champion inverter generators that we can link together when we need double the power. Those can run both off of gasoline or propane, and we have a Jackery power station with 1200 watts of folding solar panels that was passed along to me from RV Life when I was hosting the RV Entrepreneur podcast. And we carry a car generator, which Jonathan, the inventor, sent me to try out after I interviewed him on the RV Entrepreneur podcast. So why do we carry all these energy generation sources? Plain and simple, options. I like to have options. By far, the easiest to use is car generator. Let's go check it out. So car generator is the lightest option, and from start to finish, I can have it set up in less than one minute. It simply clamps onto the jump start posts of any vehicle. In my truck, that's the battery terminals and uses power produced by the alternator with the running engine to turn 12 volts direct current into 120 volts alternating current through a commercial grade pure sine wave inverter that has a huge reserve capacity, literally the fuel tank of my vehicle. And according to the calculations and tests done by car generator, most folks would get anywhere from 50 to 70 hours of runtime on a tank of fuel. Because it uses the fuel tank on the vehicle, you wouldn't have to mess with additional fuel storage or refilling small generator tanks every day with a portable gas can and although modern inverter generators are exceptionally quiet for what they are, my truck at idle using car generator is absolutely quieter and less obtrusive than running my generators. Some ways that we use car generator over the past year have been to top off our RV batteries on something like a cloudy day while we were boondocking at the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, to make smoothies for breakfast after a stopover night at Cracker Barrel parking lot, and to run our RV during a perfect storm of inconvenience while dry camping in Southern Florida. We had used up our reserve five gallon gas can in the generator and unfortunately the propane connection on our generators had broke during a long weekend and we were at least an hour from the nearest gas station. So instead of spending my evening driving to the nearest fuel station and spending at least two hours in the car to keep the fridge cold overnight, I plugged in car generator and we powered everything in the rig for additional few hours before bed, saving me both time, money, and ultimately providing a ton of convenience. Now, car generator isn't some new to the market idea that will be a silver bullet for all of your power needs, but it is an out of the box plug and play option to get reliable, safe, and convenient power on demand for RV use or while you're at home. You can also get a quick connect pigtail that stays attached to your vehicle, making the connections and setup even faster and more secure. The adjustment strap and rubberized backing allow you to safely hang it on the front of your vehicle and the custom housing vents heat out the top handle and is weatherproof, allowing you to use this power source when you need it most, as it especially shines during inclement weather when other power sources have failed. Which brings me to the downfalls of car generator. One, it's tied to your vehicle, which means you can only power your RV when the tow vehicle is present and within reach. Two, it's limited on power. There's several models of car generator, but the most ubiquitous version supplies 1,000 watts of power. You can go bigger, but you'd have to verify with car generator that your vehicle's alternator output is sufficient, which typically means that you have a high output alternator or a second one. For reference, car generator paired my Ram 2500 with a 6.4 liter gas engine to the 1,000 watt all weather model because it's equipped with a 180 amp alternator. My final concern with car generator is it's not currently user serviceable. When car generator first sent this unit to me, I was hosting a large event where we needed some portable power. Awesome, a non-emergency situation where we can test it out. With all the commotion of the event, the car generator got hooked up in reverse to the vehicle's battery. There was an immediate and audible pop as the fuses inside the inverter blew as designed, and the little inattention led to a dumb mistake but in the end, the only casualty was a few blade fuses. Unfortunately, the way the car generator is assembled, it's not easily serviced by the consumer. I spent quite a bit of time removing the inverter from the weatherproof case in a manner that wouldn't destroy the case. There were more than a few choice words shouted in frustration, but ultimately I succeeded and was able to replace the blown fuses inside the inverter. After speaking with Jonathan and Car Generator, they are exploring options for version 2.0 to have accessible blade fuses that would be serviceable by the end user. Unfortunately, there's not a time frame on when version 2.0 is going to be available. There are definitely cheaper ways to DIY the same solution, but the all-weather housing and plug-and-play nature of the unit are conveniences worth considering. Our next power option is the newest player at the campsite. Solar generators, as they're called, are really a combination of two parts a power station that includes a solar charge controller, a small battery, and an inverter, and then is paired with foldable solar panels. They are hands down the easiest solar system that you can use to power your RV. Open the box and plug everything in. There is no hard wiring or mounting required, and as long as the sun is shining, they can capture solar energy and turn it into usable electricity. 
These power station solar panel combos are becoming increasingly popular because they require no special knowledge, installation, or equipment to use. Yet they come with a cost, and that is financial. At the moment, these plug-and-play solar generators, especially the ones large enough to power more than your small electronics and fans, like this Jackery 2000 watt Solar Pro, cost way more than actually installing quality components of a solar system directly into your RV. Another pro is that it's portable though. You can use it whenever and wherever. You just have to transport it and set it up. However, that can also be a con as setting up and tearing down 1200 watts of four fold panels takes a bit of doing compared to having them permanently installed on your roof. Additionally, the power station weighs nearly as much as my champion generator Plus, you then add in the weight and space of each of the foldable solar panels. Another count I found with this Jackery power station specifically is that the user has no control over how fast the unit charges. And you wouldn't initially think of that as a con, right? You want it to charge faster, but let me explain why. We've used this solar generator several times as our silent off-grid power supply. However, after a single cloudy day, the lithium battery inside is depleted and obviously needs to be recharged. No sweat, right? I can just charge it up off of a traditional generator and or plug in car generator and use that to recharge the battery inside. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. When charging via the wall AC plug, this unit always tries to pull at least 1500 watts of power to fast charge and get it charged back as fast as possible. And there's no way to scale that back. So the 1500 watts of power immediately puts car generator out of the running. And I've had issues charging it with a single 2000 watt inverter. The Jackery says it's charging at 1500 watts, but I put a kilowatt meter in between there and shows that it was actually pulling closer to 1700 watts, which is pushing the 100% output of a 2000 watt generator. Because remember the advertised number are the surge numbers, not the constant load numbers. And because of that, it was therefore tripping the overload switch on the generator, requiring me to link up and run both generators. Now this isn't a huge deal as long as you know about the requirement. But for a solar generator that is capable of accepting anywhere from zero to 1200 watts of solar energy or 18 watts of DC power via the 12 volt plug, why can't this uber expensive machine have an option to charge at half speed? In these very common RV boondocking or home emergency scenarios where power management is crucial and sometimes you have to choose how much power you pull at what time, I'd love to have the option to charge at 800 watts for four hours, or even charge down to 400, 200 watts at a time. It's just a little bit frustrating that with all the sophisticated electronics and controls inside these units, that I can't have any control over how fast it tries to charge. Also beware that although you can technically pass through charge, meaning pull power out while putting it in at the same time, I've seen some lower voltage levels with the output while trying it. And I've also had a few error codes when trying to charge off the solar panels and power things through the RV while boondocking that essentially require me to unplug everything and reset it. A pain to do and something that you actually have to be present to do. So if you're away from your RV, that's a big problem. Overall, I think these solar generator all-in-one models are the way of the future. Plug and play, drop and go. But all right now, all the little bugs and especially the price point will have to be worked out before I can make these my first investment for plug and play portable power. Now let's jump onto the tried and true, the fossil fuel generators. For my current setup, I've chosen two champion dual fuel inverter generators. Having two small units that I can link together makes them much easier to move around. And I essentially have a backup. If for whatever reason, one generator isn't working, I have the second. They can run off of propane or gasoline. And I really like having both those options available from the factory with the Champion brand. I've used both fuel sources and have easily switched between the gas and the propane based on fuel availability and how long I plan to run the generator. It's also important to remember that different fuels contain different amounts of energy. Gasoline and propane have different amounts of energy density and environmental conditions such as altitude can also affect the total amount of power output available when using a generator. That being said, as long as you can get fuel for them, they're reliable and simple to use. For RV use, you'll definitely want to stick with inverter model generators. It's a safer, more stable energy source for your rig. It manages its power better, and it definitely is quieter than cheaper non-inverter counterparts. In addition to procuring propane refills or spilling gasoline while messing with no spill gas can spouts, you also have to make sure to change the engine oil and if you're using gasoline that has ethanol in it that you'll want to run it often or run it dry after each use to help keep the internal components from going up. This is by far the most familiar option out there. Many fifth wheels and motorhomes come with large onboard generators already installed and wired up. It's a great option that is simple to implement and the most well known. So if you ever have an issue out camping, there's bound to be someone around that can help you out. Using my truck engine, solar energy converted through a power station and dual fuel inverter generators are the three plug and play portable power options that I use to power my IV. 
Based on what type of camping you do, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your off-grid and emergency power setup looks like. What components are you using? That's all I have for today. I'll see you on the next one. Happy camping.